I can't even think about all of the shit I did to fit in. Pass hard to watch like a fucking scary movie. I'm always happy to meet somebody that never knew me. Change for the better, hope niggas are living through me. I put it all on the wax so the people can know the true me. Hard to remain sane when the people you love the most is what's causing the damn pain. Y'all be by the same thing. We ain't playing the same game. It's all for my fam name. She the girl of your fucking dreams, but to me she a plain chain. You dip in ball, man. I duck when them calls came. This that higher level thinking. I'm the type to jump the fuck off for the shit before it's sinking. Not here for no new shit. My game slide to boost it. Hey, I don't have to prove shit. Rockstar fight. The fool shit. My movie, this the new script. I want a life with no bullshit, nigga. I know on these news clips, that's why I dab them and move quick. Won't be around when they move switch. Won't be around when they lose clips. Won't be around for they lose lips. Might be the reason they pull shit. Yeah. Level. Here come the bus. Yo, check me out. Check. Listen to me. Actually, hold up. Give me a sec. Let's it do me. Yo, check me out for a second, yo. When, yo, when I was a kid, when I was younger, we used to watch uh what's the name of that shit? ABC. That uh 25 days of Christmas, that shit used to be lit. Now, I don't know if that still come on. I don't watch cable TV much like other people. Not even just ca I don't have like we just got the internet. So I'm not sure how, how that work out nowadays. And I'm sorry for the slow intro. You know what I'm doing. But listen. Them shits used to be lit when I was coming up, bro. Like, I remember watching The Year Without a Santa Claus. I re Rudolph the Red Frosty. You know, I remember all those shit, cuz. But I'm gonna tell you something. I saw this Christmas movie last year, right? I was watching these Christmas movies with my little cousins. Well, with my little nephews. I'm tripping. And I watched, um, I don't know what the name of this movie was. I think it was Klaus or Klaus. Bro, it, I don't know what it was. That movie, I started off looking at it right thinking, oh, this is going to be like a knockoff cartoon type of Christmas movie. It's not really going to be good or that long. Not only was the shit long, pause, but that shit was probably one of the better Christmas cartoon movies out in there. I mean, it's probably one of the better Christmas movies I don't watch because I can't even think of all the great Christmas movies I don't watched off of the top of my head. Like This Christmas, that one, Jingle All the Way I used to watch growing up were on Schwarzenegger. I'm trying to think of the, I can't think of too many other Christmas movies. Like, I done probably seen some, but they not really sticking out in my head like that. This one stuck out to me, like, because I, I was thinking about it earlier uh, last week. I was like, yo, I might watch that again this year. That is a, gr bruh. I'm so happy I just thought of that. So, yo, it was this, uh, my aunt and them, they, we getting a little family get together for Christmas Eve, right? And they um want to do, like, she want to do some fire pit shit. Um, but they want to watch it. She got, like, this real nice deck area. But they want to watch, like, uh, a movie. Bro, that's going to be the movie I suggest. I guess everybody going to suggest a movie. Because I, I got to suggest a movie I done seen, bro. I'm not suggesting a movie I haven't seen. Because I'm not going to sit there through a movie that I don't like. Because I will get the fuck up and walk out of a movie that I don't like. So I'm going to suggest a movie that I know I like. But I'm going to say I ain't seen it. And Klaus or Klaus is going to be the one I suggest. Because not only would a little kids who there like that movie... But that's a movie that adults gonna like too, bro. That is such a dope fucking movie. Like, I, bro, I'm remembering every scene. I like the artwork or the animation for that movie too. Like, that's a good... They should make a part two, yo. They should make a part two. I don't know how they would do it. Maybe, maybe, because uh, I don't... I think it'd be stupid to write the town going back into chaos after turning it around. I, I don't know. They got to figure out a creative way to do a part two because that shit was hitting. I ain't gonna lie. Netflix did that one. Because Netflix dropped a lot of trash. But either way, week 14, yo. Obviously, it's not over yet. 
we got the Monday night football game coming around New England, Arizona. But Sunday is done. Week 14 Sunday scores, we're going to run through them real quick. But first, obviously the first game of week 14 was the Las Vegas Raiders heading into L.A. to take on the, Char uh, the Chargers. To take on the Rams, in which an upset occurred. I could care less that it was an upset because I told you that Vegas was still a bad team. I know people was trying to act like they weren't. They were a bad team still. Nonetheless, Minnesota headed into Detroit. And Detroit got the dub. Now listen, here's the thing about this game. I wanted to pick Detroit, but I just, I done picked them too many times in these type of spots and they done let me down. I was happy when I kept turning to this game and they was winning. I was so happy. I was like, I know I picked against them, so they're going to fuck up my record this week. But I was like, bruh, this, I continue to say it. The way Detroit playing, if you go out and get a legitimate head coach, bro, you could turn this thing around. Because I understand it's still going to be people saying Dan Campbell is a great head coach. I just don't see what he do that's so great, to be honest with you. But that's neither here nor there. Minnesota, 23-34 uh, loss. I don't understand Minnesota, yo. They got a negative point differential on the season, and they 10-3. They, they like I said, they spend half of a game not knowing how to score the ball. Like, I don't really understand the Minnesota Vikings. This is one of the biggest reasons I don't believe in this team. They looking like that Steelers team looked a couple years ago with Big Ben down the stretch. Philly headed into uh, the New Netherlands to take on the New York Giants. I knew exactly what was going to happen. Philly wins 48-22. Devontae Smith had a touchdown in this game. Well, I just don't understand how that shit ended in a touchdown and not Devontae Ad I mean Devontae Smith getting absolute absolutely drilled. <laughs> Excuse me. Absolutely drilled. Like I really didn't understand it like that. Sometimes it just feel like motherfuckers be trying to throw games. It just feel like that. And then sometimes it feel like like bro, I know you doing this at an elite level and I probably couldn't do this. But what the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, bruh, what are you doing? But that's neither here nor there. I continue to tell you on a weekly basis, I don't understand people who continue to doubt Philly. By the way, Jalen Hurts is the MVP. Y'all better not, better not rob that man of his MVP award. That is MVP. I don't care about people talking about some, oh, he got a lot of talent around him. Because that's why people was using to keep Matt, Pat Mahomes over him. Oh, Pat Mahomes got so much less talent. Bro, just because Jalen Hurts' team did the right thing in building around him and he actually developed and progressed and has gotten better with that talent. Because it's dudes who get that type of talent who ain't that who don't use that talent properly, like Baker Midfield. So Jalen Hurts is the MVP to me. And listen, if I was a hater, I could easily say like, nah, he shouldn't be MVP. Lamar won MVP one year. He didn't have nowhere near that level of talent on his team. I don't give a fuck about that, bro. I care about what's going on this season. And this season, Jalen Hurts is the MVP. His team just went to 12-2 and two on the season. I continue to say they look like the most complete team in football, not just the NFC, in football. They can win games in so many different ways. The way people love on the Cincinnati Bengals, because I think the Cincinnati Bengals are a good team also. They are not better than the Eagles. The way people talk about the Bengals is how they should be talking about the Eagles. I, but th this infatuation with Joe Burrow, and I get it. They got to the Super Bowl last year, blah, blah, blah. The Eagles are the best team in football. And I don't know how motherfuckers ain't seen it. And you know what's crazy? People use so many different type of uh, gateway excuses to try to make it seem like Philly not think, oh, well, you know, if they play from behind, well, you know, oh, they don't want too many turnover battles. If they lose a the turnover battle, and oh. They don't won in so many different... Oh, well, maybe if they offense ain't going... They don't won in damn near every way you can move the goalpost. They don't hit the field goal every time. But, hey, I, I just know when the playoffs roll around, if Philly don't win and get to the Super Bowl, people going to start going nuts, bro. And that's, that's really going to irritate the fuck out of me. I'm not going to lie to you. But Philly picks up yet another big win. The Houston Texans were in Dallas, taking on the Dallas Cowboys. And boy, boy, boy. Boy, boy, boy. 23-27 win for Dallas. They had to get a touchdown at the end of the game on a Zeke Elliott touchdown run to uh, win it. What a game. Dak Prescott done looked pretty average the last couple weeks, and I'm not shocked. Dak had these type stretches every season, I feel like, where he have like a couple weeks where he struggled a little bit. 
I'm pretty sure when he he gonna get out of this funk. Now the problem is he done had these stretches down the stretch of the season too many times. They gotta find a way to get him out of this little funk he in the last couple weeks. I know they've been winning, and the defense didn't look that great today either. They let a team that didn't really have a number one receiver go. Two receivers went crazy on. So Dallas got the win, and good teams, great teams, find ways to win these games when you don't really got it going on. But listen, everybody continue to say, like I heard last week people say Dallas was the best team in the NFC. Dallas was the second best team. People keep talking about Dallas should beat the Eagles when they play them. All this rhetoric. Dallas is not better than the Eagles. And while I like this Dallas team, today was yet another reminder to me that Dallas can lay eggs. They won this game because Houston, at the end of the game, Laramie Tonsil decided on the game winning drive. Let me just, you know, fall, have two false starts. Like, just two dickhead ass false starts. Like, the, the Texans at the end of this game showed you they are trying to get the number one pick in the draft. You're not finna tell me they didn't whisper into this motherfucker ear and say, hey, go ahead and get them two false starts. Because they was moving the ball. Davis Mills got the shit down the field real quick on a big pass. And then they immediately had two false starts because the coach whispered in the ear, hey, we're trying to get the number one pick, my boy. So they just took it out of uh, t- uh they took it out of um Davis Mills' hands. So that's embarrassing, but hey, it is what it is. I can't hate on them trying to get the number one pick because God knows we ain't trying to see this Houston football team two years in a row look like this. So I ain't even mad at it. The Baltimore Ravens go into Pittsburgh and they pick up a 16-14 win. Tyler Huntley got hurt in this game. And I know this game is not on my list of things I'm talking about this episode, but I do want to run through this real quick. And I'm going to try to spend just a quick little minute on it. Tyler Huntley got hurt in this game and then uh, the third string came in. And I can't remember his name at the moment, even though I'm a Baltimore fan. Excuse me for not looking up our third string quarterbacks. The game plan for Tyler Huntley is bad uh, because it's a run heavy type of thing and short throws. But now on top of the game plan being bad for me, in my opinion, because nobody going to say it because it's old oh, man. They run, they got a quarterback who played basically like Lamar. They run the same system. They run a reckless system with. See, you can say it's reckless with Lamar, but I don't really think it is um, Lamar. And plus Lamar is. You just got a God-given ability with his elusiveness that nobody else really have. And you can see that today. Because the same shots that Tyler Huntley was taking, because he got drilled damn near every time he got hit today. Lamar not taking them hits. It's a clear difference in the quarterbacks, but that's one of the other differences I wanted to say. I don't really think, I think the injury could have been avoided if the game plan was different with him and he played a safer. I don't think Tyler Huntley is elusive. And because he run a lot, he get hit a lot. And he more uh, prone to big hits because he not elusive like Lamar. He not seeing the cuts and the shits he got to do before he take the hits. Like he had an open field run in this game where he took a big hit because he couldn't get past one dude. It was a one-on-one. And he couldn't break that one dude. And he had the space to think of something to break him. So he not as elusive as you would like to be. And when you not an elusive quarterback and you not built like a Josh Allen who do reckless shit like he did today, then you're going to get hurt. And I had a feeling he was going to get hurt before this game got to the end of the game because of how they was calling the game. One of the things that really irritate me about Baltimore is I don't know who is watching these games. Eric DaCosta is clearly not doing his job. Whoever these scouters are who supposed to be watching these games, evaluating talent is clearly not doing their jobs. This is a God awful offense. It was bad before Lamar, but clearly it was only hanging on because of how great Lamar is, his generational talent. Looking at this offense with Tyler Huntley and whoever else the uh, third string was, this is an offense that basically cannot pass the ball. They get lucky and hit a pass here or there. They cannot pass the ball. They don't have weapons who get open. Duvernay, who looked decent in the beginning of the season, looks god-awful. They try to run the same play with him now, and it don't work if Lamar not back there because the threat of Lamar is... When you don't have a threat of having to defend Lamar, defenses can stop the Ravens' offense with ease. Tyler Huntley, for as good as people keep trying to hype him up to be, is nowhere near as good as Lamar Jackson. So a defense do not play the same as they play Lamar. 
because Tyler Huntley can run, but he ain't the same runner. I also don't think he got the highest football IQ like a Lamar Jackson or a quarterback on that level of a Lamar Jackson. And that's clear in decisions that he make throughout these games. And the play calling don't do no better. Like, I can't really assassinate the play calling too much because I think Tyler Huntley is a limited quarterback. They keep overhyping him because they have absolutely no respect for Lamar Jackson. But I watch the game, so I know what I'm seeing. Tyler Huntley is a backup to me. Now, maybe if you had him uh, under another type of, you know, a system where he was the guy and you was building around him, maybe you could get him to that point. Right now, Tyler Huntley is not a starting quarterback. They didn't win this game because of a play that Tyler Huntley did. They made they won this game because of the running by J.K. Uh, Dobbins, something that Lamar ain't had all season. And the defense stepped up. and Well, Mitchell Trubisky uh, made a lot of plays for us today. He was probably the Ravens' best player today. And he played for the Steelers because he threw three dickhead type interceptions, reminding you why he is a backup. But the Baltimore Ravens are going to have to figure something out because to me, this was just further proof today. Yeah, they got lucky and won this game today, but this offense is god awful. It was to me, I already was telling you how bad it was before it got to this point. Do you? It was a stat that they showed today that would just further cement it why Lamar should leave this team and why Baltimore should be held accountable for not doing nearly enough to build around him and then utilize his talent while he was on that rookie deal they just continued to let him go out there and be everything for this offense this motherfucker would lead us in receiving yards if he could do it because he already got to be the best quarterback on the team but he also got to be the best running back do you know this motherfucker got 700 something plus uh, rushing yards on the season and he don't even run nowhere near as much as he used to because the running back i think the highest running total for a running back not named no, the highest running back total for us, I think, was like 400, and I'm probably being generous. Lamar got 700 something, so he got to be a quarterback, a running back, and he got to be like the best player on the team all around. Like, it, do you understand how irritating that is for a quarterback in the NFL who trying to win a Super Bowl, who know he a generational talent, to have to do all these things? Like people call, talk about, oh, Lamar run too much. For one, he don't. Two, what the fuck else is he supposed to do? If you take his yards out of this team's rushing game, this is an atrocious run team who also does not have skill positions on the outside. I don't get it, but they still a win once again. Cleveland went into Cincinnati to take on the Cincinnati Bengals, and they lose 10-23. It was a, a, a grinded-out game for uh, Joe, uh, Joe Burrow because he finally got a win against the Bengals. I mean, against the Browns. He lost his two uh, receivers in this game, Boyd and Higgins, I believe it was. Jamar Chase did still play. I think it's going to change this offense against a different type of team. Like, Joe Mixon had a good game. Like, a lot of great – Joe uh, Burrow made a great throw uh, on a touchdown. He had – a lot of different dudes in this game <laughs> that I can't even remember their names at the moment. And Deshaun Watson looked better than he did last week. But last week, I mean, how you bound to look better than you looked last week. My biggest thing coming out of this game, though, just in my personal opinion, I, I probably would have. I'm conflicted. Because the Browns could have still been in the playoff hunt, in my opinion, if if Jacoby finished the season. However, because he was getting into a rhythm, the offense was clicking around him. You knew what plays you wanted to call. You knew what you was doing. Everybody was already set. The problem is you thought he was going to be bad. So I guess because you thought Jacoby wasn't going to play as good as he was playing. I don't know. But. I get playing Deshaun because you want him to get, you know, you rather get him accustomed back to the NFL speed now than next year. So I guess you have to sacrifice the playoff berth this year. But damn, man, because I don't know if they're going to win another game this year. Like they beat the Texans because, like I told you, this Texans is specializing in getting the number one pick in the draft right now. But I don't know if they beat nobody else because Jacoby Brissett probably win this game. Cleveland did not play Cincinnati did not play a good enough game to make me believe if Cincinnati if the if if the Cleveland had Jacoby and they ran the offense that they would have ran with him they probably win this game so that's very interesting to me but people look at this as oh man Joe Burrow just lifted you know I done heard all the the Cincinnati stuff already so you know New York the Jets, they went to Buffalo to take on. I'm going to run through these real quick. The Jets went to Buffalo to take on the Buffalo Bills. They end up losing 12-20. 
in a grinded out game in Buffalo. Jacksonville Jaguars head to Tennessee to take on the Titans. They win a 36-22 game. KC went to Denver to take on the Denver Broncos. Denver finally found their offense, but they lose 34-28, and Russell Wilson got hurt at the, towards the end of that game. Tampa Bay went to San Francisco and got blasted 7-35 in Brock Purdy's first start. And Carolina went to Seattle and got the upset over Seattle 30-24. And Sunday Night Football, Miami went to uh, L.A. and got upset by the Chargers 17-23. So, with that, we're going to start off talking about the Chargers and the Dolphins recap. Two of the Tua had a tough game in this one for a long stretch of this game. It wasn't looking real good for my guy Tua. Now, I saw people piling on him like, oh, Tua can't throw. Don't ever compare him to this dude. Don't ever compare him to that dude. He ain't this. He ain't that. And I'm like, bro, y'all really go ham on dudes that y'all not sold on when they have bad games. Like, Tua don't have a mountain of evidence that he a bad quarterback. He got more evidence to prove he a better a winning quarterback than he a losing quarterback, but people continue to want to pile on him when he have a bad game or off night. I done seen Lamar have off days, off nights. Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes just threw three interceptions today. I done seen all the great quarterbacks have off nights, off seasons, off weeks, off months. Why people trying to do this to Tua, I'm still confused. But Tua did struggle tonight. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's all about narrative. Because as much as Tua struggled tonight, the game was still 17-23. Not only that, for the majority of his struggles where he only had completed like three passes for 20-something yards, most of the... Uh, the Chargers was throwing Herbert was throwing for a lot of yards wasn't scoring too many uh, big points I mean they only ended the game with 23 points that's a couple field goals and two touchdowns they got to the red zone they kicked field goals they went to the red zone they didn't convert on fourth down turnover on downs and while the Tua and his offense really wasn't doing much and the, the first score for them came on a fumble that Tyreek Hill picked up and ran to the crib like 50 something plus yards dude's ridiculous as bad as the offense for Miami was for a second week, and as bad as I think Miami's defense played tonight, the Chargers' offense is just an offense that throw the ball. So, and that's all Chris Collinsworth. And I don't usually, I'm not usually critical of Chris Collinsworth. I love Chris Collinsworth and um, Mike Tirico. I think they are phenomenal in the booth. I, I think really every single booth is all the prominent booth teams to me is pretty good on the major like games, like Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night. All those three booths right there, locked down. All of them been doing great this year. Chris Collinsworth was on that man, uh, Herbert Heavy. I mean, this dude was completing five-yard throws, and Chris Collinsworth was just foaming out the mouth. And I think that's what it is. When you already done decided Justin Herbert going to be great, he going to be this, he going to be that, you don't focus on all the missed opportunities that the Chargers have throughout the game like they do for a Lamar Jackson. Because for Lamar Jackson, I can't watch a game where they don't talk about, oh, you know, if he had made this throw, he missed that throw. They missed this. They been, And it could be on other players, but they're going to put it on Lamar. You look at these games for the Chargers, they're going to blame everything on everybody but Justin Herbert. It don't matter how good or bad he played. He threw the ball 50-something fucking times in this game. And I continue to say they overthrow so much with him. They do it in Buffalo at times, but they do it all the time in L.A. with the Chargers. Yet, you throw that many times and you only win 17-23. Not only that, Austin Eckler, who has become far better at running the ball as a pure running back, every time he get the ball, it feel like he do something positive. But they go so long with these stretches of not giving him the ball, not giving him the ball in smart situations. And it, it just don't make no fucking sense. I'm talking about just running it. They rather throw these dump off receiver screens, these little receiver out screens and shit like that, these little two yard, three yard routes. Instead of just letting Austin Eckler eat up some of them pass attempts that Justin Herbert don't have to have. But it feel like they already made the decision with certain quarterbacks. He going to be great. So we going to have. And the only thing they care about for Justin Herbert is his throwing yards, because clearly they don't care about his win loss record. 
that like I said, they don't criticize him for the missed opportunities he have throughout the game. They blame everything on the head coach or somebody on the defense and things of that nature. But I still will continue to say Justin Herbert, as good as I think he is, has not shown me anything of he is special. They just throw the ball so fucking much. And when you have them two weapons, which co- coincidentally tonight he actually had weapons, people say, even though he don't had them weapons the majority of his career, he done showed you that he don't elevate bad talent, but he phenomenal when he got good talent. But how great is phenomenal when a lot of games with the Chargers are closed games now because they don't blow people out. They can't really outscore people like you thought an offense with that quarterback, those weapons would. But we constantly, I constantly hear people foaming at the mouth about them. I mean, I don't know a quarterback at this moment who is as praised as much as Justin Herbert. And I'm not trying to sound like that goof Emmanuel Acho. But who is a quarterback who done underachieved at the level of, uh, who done underachieved or haven't accomplished nothing like a jo- Justin Herbert and is praised as if he done won two Super Bowls? I don't get it. And then you got Tua, who got a better winning record than Herbert, who gets shitted on for every bad thing he do. So to me, it's all about narrative. That's what you're going to take from this game. If you're a Justin Herbert fan, it's going to be like, oh, Justin Herbert had a hell of a night. If you don't really, if you're not feeling Tua, it's going to be like, oh, man, Tua was terrible. He cost his team the game. I really think Miami's defense had multiple opportunities to get stops in this game when they needed them, and they never did, in my opinion. They almost got that onside kickback at the end of the game, but this, this was a divisional game. Well, it wasn't even a divisional game. It, it felt like a divisional game, though. But really, I think Miami's offense. Tyreek Hill is just an insane player, bro. Like, I really think he should be in MVP conversations. He ain't going to win it because I think just uh, Jalen Hurts is going to win it. Because you're not going to give it to a skilled player when a quarterback having a season that Jalen Hurts having. You you just can't do it. But I, I wouldn't be shocked if they found a way to hold him because Lamar's MVP season where he won unanimously, he wasn't even – people wasn't even yelling that to, like, at half with like after the seattle win i think it was because they was trying to give all these other dudes uh the thing over him and he started beating all of them coincidentally because a narrative who they like who they don't like a narrative that he didn't beat top teams was following him he was beating top teams that whole year his mvp season and he don't got no stefan diggs no jamar chase playing outside when he was with them teams but i digress I want to hop to, uh, and this was a big win for the Chargers. They needed this win. But I want to hop to C-Mac and uh, Brock Purdy and them boys blowing out the um, Tom Brady and the Bucks. So I picked the Bucks to win this game. I regret picking them almost damn near immediately after the first quarter um, because this Bucks offense is just bad, bro. Mike Evans and Brady ain't on the same page. They throw so many damn passes behind the line of scrimmage and hope that the receivers and the running backs going to pick up crazy amounts of yards. I don't find the uh, offense that they run over here in... Um, I, I It's not even the offensive scheme, bro. I don't think that the Bucks are a great coach team. I think that's the problem when you lose a Bruce Arians. Um... I like Brian Leftwich, but you can't tell me it wouldn't help to have an offensive, uh, also an offensive mind like Bruce Arians. And one of the problems with the Bucks is when you cannot score, and you got teams that can, like the uh, 49ers when they own, like Detroit who could sneak into the playoffs, like the um. Philadelphia Eagles, which is the biggest one. You got yourself a problem. And so, C Mac, I'm so happy for C Mac that he now with a team again that utilized him. I knew this was going to happen when he got to them. I was interested in how Brock Purdy played. Uh, I'm going to talk about him in a second, but C Mac is that guy. If C Mac was with this team the whole season, he would be in the MVP race too. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about this. It's a distinct difference between a C Mac and an Austin Eckler. And Austin Eckler is becoming a stud, but C Mac is him. Like, Christian McCaffrey is a dog. Like, I love watching this dude play. I really wish this motherfucker was a Raven. I knew it was no shot he was coming to us. When he was coming out of the draft, I wanted him to his ass to drop to the Ravens. Like, Christian McCaffrey is a... a in baseball, we would call a Mookie Betts a five-tool player. Christian McCaffrey is a five-tool player for his position. I love everything about Christian McCaffrey. He done got better. When he was... Before he started getting hurt, 
he became a better runner through the tackles. Christian McCaffrey is a dog, and he is the exact type of player that Kyle Shanahan needed for this offense. I don't think Brock Purdy is the long-term answer, honestly. But he had a decent game today. I'm not going to go crazy like some of the analysts on TV did. But uh, he threw for 185 yards. He made some big throws in this game. Now, dudes was open, but he made some big plays in this game under pressure. I, people hype it up because of the Tom Brady element. Oh, he playing against Tom Brady when actually he playing against the defense. Um, but the, the defense couldn't stop shit for the Bucks. They couldn't stop the running. They couldn't stop, like... It wasn't even like Brock was dicing him apart. Christian McCaffrey could not be stopped on the ground. He went for over 100 on the ground. Christian McCaffrey looked like prime Christian McCaffrey again. I'm happy for him. Like I said, one of my favorite players to watch when he's healthy. So I'm I'm extremely excited to see Mac is healthy. He's just a dog, bro. You know he the leader of this. Christian McCaffrey then came in on this team. And he already looked like the... Not only do he look like the best player on his offense, because he is, and... I don't care that they got a Debo. Who, and Debo Samuel got hurt in this game. So ho- hoping he heal up. I think it's an ankle injury. He, his ankle got fucked up when he was getting tackled. Christian McCaffrey Walker, he got the aura of the best player on this team. Like, it just got a feeling that if Chris, if, if C-Mac balling, we got we winning. That's what it feel like. And that should never be the case for a team if you want to win the Super Bowl, in my opinion, because your quarterback should give you that feeling. But when you got a Christian McCaffrey and a Kyle Shanahan, that's the difference. Because he already shown you he don't need a superstar quarterback to get to a Super Bowl. So, Brock Purdy played good enough to where I still have faith in San Fran now. My faith in San Fran is restored. Because if you just become a game manager like an Alex Smith or Jimmy Garoppolo and just make the plays that you need to make that's there, don't do too much, then this is going to be gold for them. I, I feel very confident in in um San Fran. And like I said, Brock Purdy, it was a good game for him. Um, it wasn't nothing crazy in my opinion, but it was a great game. It was a good, decent game for him. Tom Brady and the Bucks, man, they're going to have to do something about this offense, bro. This is a bad offense. Like, a bad offense. Like, goodness gracious. This, listen to me. This is a bad offense. I don't. They're going to have to figure that out because they probably still going to win this division because it's a bad division. But, hey, wouldn't it be funny if Carolina sneak around and find a way to fuck around? And win? I think if if Steve Wilkes can get, like, two more wins, he might end up getting his job. Because if he get two more wins, Carolina has seven wins on the season. They'll be seven and nine, I believe. But, uh, no, seven and ten, I'm tripping. And that's a decent record for what you thought the uh, Panthers was going to start off with. But next, I want to get to the Phillies dominating once again. I know I talked about them a little bit when I was going through the score, but I just want to reiterate this. This game right here, people who was like, oh, it's a divisional game. You know, it's going to be a tough one for Philly. They're going against the Giants. So. Are we not? Are y'all just choosing not to watch these Philadelphia games or are y'all choosing to watch them and ignore what y'all see when watching these Philadelphia games? Because it ain't no motherfucking way. Y'all watching this team play. And y'all still think that this is a team that can be got. This is a team that I look at. When I watch Philly, I say to myself, this team going to have to have a real bad game to lose a game. Because they can have an average game and still beat your ass. That's that's where I'm at with Philly, bro. They can have an average game and beat your ass. So you have to pray that these boys just go out there and have a turnover-heavy game. Because I'm at the point where they can have a bad game and still win. But they can have an average game and beat your ass. If they, I told you, they can beat you with throwing the ball. They can beat you with running the ball. Miles Sanders went for, I think, 144 fucking yards today and three touchdowns. I could have been over exaggerating his stats right there, but he had a crazy game. It was just further proof the Eagles can win in every way possible on offense. They have a great defense. I love that core of the Eagles right now. This is a team that feel like this is going to be a team that's dominating for years to come if they can keep all these boys together. And they can keep changing in the veteran pieces and shit. This, this is a – Jalen Hurts got them boys rolling. Sirianni excited on the sideline. It's an exciting time in Philly. Right now, if I had to pick a – I told you, my revised Super Bowl pick, you know it would be real crazy if Detroit and Philly end up in a playoff game. That would be a high-scoring game. But actually, no, it wouldn't, because I think Philly's defense would be able to uh, slow. I just think Philly a complete team, bro. 
Philly is a complete team. If it's a shootout, that's because Philly having their worst defense, one of their worst defensive games of the season. Because Philly don't even really be letting teams go nuts on them. And usually when teams start to score, it's probably because Philly already done act, ice their ass out. Philly is different, bro. This is a dominant-looking Philly team. It feel like a super team, to be completely honest with you. But, hey, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm tripping. And a quick, just some quick uh, Sunday runaround. Some quick thoughts from Sunday. One of my biggest thoughts being the Bucks are in trouble. That is an atrocious offense. I don't know what you do about that right now. Another thought being, listen, like I told you, the narrative around that Miami um, Chargers game is interesting because I think they still throw the ball way too much. Justin Herbert did have a great game, though. Don't let that get lost in all the things I'm saying and the criticism and things I'm saying. Justin Herbert, if he have a lesser game, they probably lose this game. Because he made the big throws on third down, the big plays on third, he even had a run on it. He made big plays on big downs. But that's what I'm saying. You don't got to throw the ball 52 fucking times for him to make them big plays when it matter. But to me, that's still a thing because I just I, I don't I don't understand this shit they doing in uh, with uh, the Chargers. And for a team that's just moving to seven and six, so they just now popping back over 500. Man, I am one of them people who now starting to be a little bit more critical of Brandon Staley, bro. You can't keep continue to coach as if your team is four games over 500 and secured in the playoffs. You're not. So you have to coach different. You got to take the points that are given to you, my guy. Point blank, period. So I'm, I'm that's an interesting watch for that one. Cincinnati, uh, interesting to see if those two receivers that got hurt, how long the timetable on those injuries especially down the stretch of the season. Uh, Buffalo, New York, the Jets uh, secondary did exactly. They had the game I thought they would have, but like I said at the end of the day, and Mike White, Mike White got knocked out in this game. But like I said, bro, the Dolphins, I mean, the chart, at the end of the day, this is the type of game, and we at the point in the season where the quarterback mattered, and they understand the importance of this game, Josh Allen and them boys, so I felt like he would be able to make the plays at the end of the game. KC, Pat Mahomes threw three interceptions in that game. But uh, the more important story, in my opinion, is the fact that the Broncos offense finally showed some life and showed what they could do. I do think it's kind of troublesome that dudes continue to have tension tantrums on week to week basis uh, for the Broncos. That's telling me that this is an atrociously coached team. Um, And I understand that your quarterback having a bad uh year but i don't see russell wilson on the sideline yelling at his dudes and i know some people are like well he the quarterback uh tom brady struggling i still see him going at people and shit like that so i'm not really understanding and i probably would still defend tom too i don't understand this 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 these tantrums i don't understand going at your quarterback and i don't even know if jerry judy was specific specifically aiming his uh frustration at russ but these tantrum tantrums that dudes keep having these blow-ups yeah, them shit's got to stop, bro. Y'all in the fucking NFL, bro. Like, at the end of the day, I understand you do want to win. Most of these dudes who are doing this want to win. Blage, blage. But come on, man. Can we at least wait till we get to the sideline? Or when we get to the sideline, can we not continue to do it at the other players on the team like uh, the quarterback? Can we not keep throwing tantrums? I understand, like I said, the defense, what they going. But come on, bro. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, as good as y'all is, y'all not perfect. Like, this is a tough game. Y'all all know that. At the end of the day, you should find solace in the fact that you millionaires. So, and I understand this dude's on the team who playing for contracts and all this other type of thing. As long as you doing your job. Like, this blowing up tantrum shit that the Bronco players doing, they got to chill with that shit. That's getting a little bit out of control. Um, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, I continue to say. People look at this game for Baltimore. They say, oh, man, that's a good built uh, team. I continue to say Lamar uh, is leaving this team. We in the last couple years of Lamar being a Raven. There's no reason uh, for him to come back to a team that's so poorly constructed on offense. And these games continue to show how poorly constructed. If you're a Baltimore fan, you literally watching some of the worst offensive football you've seen in the last, uh, what, two years. And you got a generational quarterback at the helm. And he is legitimately being held back by what your team, what this team won't go do for him. Like you got teams out there that's got the pieces. They just can't figure out how to get the fucking quarterback. This team has the quarterback and won't go out and get the pieces. So I imagine getting a win over a bad Pittsburgh team won't um 
influence their decision to go uh, make changes in the offseason. But, you know, that's Baltimore saving money and not re-signing their own players or building around the quarterback when you let other players of high value walk away you would think that money is used to build but no it is not it's used to waste um pittsburgh i think this officially made it so that uh, mike tomlin will have his first losing season so all good things they say come to an end and this is one of them the giants in their last six games i think have one win so they are exactly who i thought they were um, and Brian Dayball definitely ain't winning that Coach of the Year award no more. But Minnesota's coach ain't winning that shit either. Either. So who would win Coach of the Year right now? It got to be Nick Sirianni. He should have won it last year, in my opinion. But, well, he should have had consideration for it last year. He definitely winning that shit this year. Nobody thought Philly would make the playoffs last year except for me because I was on their bandwagon last year. You can go back, check tapes. And now he doing it again. He got to be coach of the year. Got to be. With that, though, I appreciate y'all for joining me on another episode of Kicking It With Saint. The Week 14 recap, even though we do have Monday Night Football to go. Tell somebody you fuck with them. Tell somebody you love them. Saint out. How the fuck I pay a couple card notes and ain't even whipping? How the fuck I'm putting food on the table while I ain't living? Curse from being alone with these dreams of a happy home. So when I think it's really love, I give them anything they want. I got stupid shit I did as a kid to find me lately. When I try to open up a new chapter, they still hate me. My men on my only drugs, so I'm doing this shit alone. Last time I fought depression and she got me on my zone. One bad move for thuggery, hit record from luxury. Pop said some shit that stuck with me. All it takes is a mustard seed. Yesterday I caught $40 to buy those. Homie and